Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India, Kolkata, Arabian Sea. Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India, Kolkata, Arabian Sea. Let's talk about the history of Russia. So first we have Vladimir I, who brought Christianity to Russia in the 900s. So Vladimir I, we have sung about him in the timeline song. We say, Vladimir I of Kiev, Byzantine Emperor Basil II. So you're going to see what all of that is about and why we include that in our timeline song. He united all Eastern Slavs under Kiev rule, and he was called the Grand Prince of Kiev. Now, in our timeline song, we say Kiev, um, but this city has been in the news a lot because currently there is a war between Russia and Ukraine, and there has been a lot of fighting in this city of Kiev or Kiev. It is the same place. And um, that is where he was the Grand Prince. So whether you say Kiev or Kiev, that's what the same place we're talking about. But before he converted to Christianity, Vladimir did not believe in the one true God. And he indulged in many pagan practices. So that means he had many shrines to pagan gods and idols of pagan gods or false gods. I had numerous wives and women, and he was even involved in human sacrifices as a part of this paganism that he followed. So you may ask, how in the world did he turn from that type of religion to Christianity? Well, that's where Basil II comes in. So at the time, Byzantine Emperor Basil II needed Russia's help to fight uprisings in Bulgaria and Anatolia. So the Byzantine Emperor, he agreed that he would give Vladimir, his sister Anna, as a wife, if only Vladimir would convert to Christianity. So in order for Vladimir to be able to marry the Byzantine um, Anna, the Byzantine Emperor Basil II said, you have to convert to Christianity. So Vladimir was baptized and received the Byzantine bride. So he made Christianity the official religion of Russia. He ordered and eventually forced his subjects to accept baptism and to become Christians and they were ordered to destroy all of the pagan idols. So he built Christian churches and schools and libraries, and he also indulged in charities for benefit of the poor and the sick. And so in the 1500s, Tsar Ivan the Terrible unified Russia. How did he earn the title of Ivan the Terrible? Well, to begin with, terrible was really meant to suggest an awe-inspiring and fearsome power of the Tsar. But Ivan became famous for his brutality for his enemies and uncontrollable fits of anger. He's known to have personally taken part in the torture and killing of his enemies. 
During his reign, he engaged in long and for the most part unsuccessful wars against Sweden and Poland. And some other things that he did was a lot of reform, a lot of reorganizing and um, you know, the way that things had been done, Ivan changed it up. So one of his big issues was he, he didn't like the members of this old Russian nobility. And so he wanted to change their ability to be in power. So he went on to reform and reorganize affairs of the church, the legal code, Russia's government by reorganizing it into departments for each state, and also military conditions were improved and reorganized. And so now, instead of military leaders being appointed by their nobility or based off of whose family they were in, now they're going to be appointed based on their merit and ability and virtue. So in order to accomplish this, Ivan instituted what is known as the reign of terror against nobles in an effort to have a more disciplined state so that it could be ordered the way that he likes. So Ivan the Terrible had this disposition where he was very feared because he would have these uncontrollable fits of anger, he was brutal, and he would really take it out on his enemies. But he didn't really begin to be so horrible until the love of his life died. So let me tell you a little bit about his bride, Anastasia. Ivan the Terrible, before he was, he was to be married, so they brought before him 1,500 young ladies. And Ivan chose Anastasia to be his bride. And he really did love her. It seems that he was very taken by her. And whenever she was around, it is known that she really soothed this menacing man that she really calmed him down and his love for her seemed to you know kind of soften him a little bit but very tragically she died of a lingering illness and Ivan believed that she was maliciously poisoned by the nobles so after her death he really went off the rails and this is when he started earning that reputation for being ruthless, paranoid, raging, and abusive. He even went on to murder his own son, which is just so, so sad. He went on to have at least five more wives, several of whom he had killed. No one could soothe him or calm him down ever again like Anastasia could. She was the only one he truly loved, and it seems like the only one that could really help him to not be such a ruthless, brutal person. And Anastasia is significant because she is the great aunt of the future Tsar of the Romanov dynasty. So, when we get into World War One and World War Two, you will learn about her nephews who were in power and their story of what went on during World War Two, and which led to this really interesting and fascinating part of history. Um, but when we start, when we get to Tsar Nicholas, and you'll see this is his great aunt. So keep in mind the name Anastasia and her relation to future czars of Russia who play a very significant role in history. Last but certainly not least, we have Peter the Great and Catherine the Great who expanded the westernized Russia in the 1700s. Again, there is so much drama, there is so much that goes on in these Russian families, these these Russian leaders are just fascinating. So we already talked about Peter the Great last week. Uh, he brought Western ideas and ways to Russia. Remember, he's the one that traveled around and wanted to modernize Russia. He strengthened his power by creating a strong army. He was crushing revolts. This was the absolute monarch we talked about. He took control of the Russian Orthodox Church. Okay, So Peter the Great did a lot for Russia.
There's a lot of reasons why she wanted to overthrow Peter, but one reason, like I said, is that their marriage was a disaster. They didn't get along or care for one another. They, they really didn't take care of one another. And so Catherine plotted a coup to overthrow him. And very easily, she was able to gain support of the most important military leaders, and she was ordained by the church. So Peter was forced to abdicate the throne, and so she became the empress. And so he abdicated, he was sent away, and then mysteriously, he died only six months later. Some say he was assassinated, some say it was a murder, yeah, it's a little mystery of how he died, but he didn't live long after she took it, after she came into power. So why is she called Catherine the Great? By the end of her 34-year-long reign, Russia had become a world power. During her reign, Catherine expanded Russia greatly. She took part of the Ottoman Empire, and she took part of Poland, and eventually she expanded Russia eastward toward the Pacific Ocean. So you know how we talked about Russia's on two continents here. Uh, we've got the Europe to the, western, to the west of Russia, and then we have Asia on the eastern side of Russia. So she expanded Russia eastward toward the Pacific Ocean, um, towards that Asian side of Russia. During her uh, reign, well, Catherine, like I said, she was well-educated. She admired culture. She loved reading and studying. So as a ruler, she encouraged the people to write and to be involved in art and theater and architecture and education. And she established the first school for girls and was the first to appoint women into important posts where they had important jobs. So that's part of her legacy. You just learned so much about the history of Russia. Great job. Demonstrative pronouns. This, that, these, and those, these, and those. This, that, these, and those, these, and those, this, and that, and these, and those, this, that, these, and those, these, and those. This dog has sunglasses. That dog has black fur. Those kittens are playing in boxes. These kittens are snuggling. For Latin, we are starting the pluperfect tense endings. And you'll see here I have this perfectly blue sky with a little kitty cat flying through the air. And we can remember our pluperfect tense. It's like that blue sky that is blue perfect or blue perfect and you can remember our little kitty cat flying through the blue perfect sky the blue perfect tense is used to describe finished actions that have been completed at a point in time in the past so these are things that have already happened they're finished actions we know that they are done. So let's go through our endings. Eron, Eros, Erot, Eramis, Eratus, Erant, First conjugation, Blue perfect tense. Eron, Eros, Erot, Eramis, Eratus, Erant, First conjugation, Blue perfect tense. Okay, so first, I'm just going to write out all of our squares. So now that we have them all written out here, we are going to look at our squares. So to make a perfect square, 
I could just draw a square in one of these little squares on my chart, and that's a perfect square. So for this one, I'm gonna write that it is one and the numbers that can be multiplied by each other to get one is one times one. Now, I'm gonna draw another perfect square, but I'm gonna use more squares this time. So my next perfect square that I could use, if I go here and I go up, is that a perfect square? No, nope, that's a rectangle, so it can't be that one. I've gotta keep going to make my perfect square out of four squares. So that's my next one. So what two numbers multiplied by each other get me four? And that's two times two. And if you notice, one, two times one, two. All right, so we're gonna go through our next one is gonna be nine squares. To draw another perfect square is gonna be nine. So how many is that? It's one, two, three times one, two, three. Next, we're gonna have to use 16 squares. What number times what number equals 16? Well, one, two, three, four times one, two, three, four equals 16. just goes up to 10 up to 100 but if I wanted to go more I would pull out this chart 1 4 9 16 25 36 49 64 81 100 121 144 169 196 225 149 16 25 36 49 64 81 100 121 144 169 196 225 So now we've gone through, you know what a square is. So it's when we have a number times itself is gonna equal the square. Just like um, two times two is four, three times three is nine. So you may see um, squares on your math, like where they say one squared equals. Well, you can figure that out because one times one equals what? One. What if they ask you two squared? They want you to multiply, they're just asking you to do two times two, which equals four. Like this one, they just did one times one equals one. This is just two times two equals four. They may, you may see somebody wanting you to answer, what's three squared? They want you to times three by itself, which is nine. You also may see it look like this. <clears throat> it's kind of like a little thing that looks like that. And then there'll be a number inside, like nine. And it'll say simplify. And so it's wanting you to tell them what's the square root of this. What's the square root of nine? It's three, because three times three is nine. So to 
simplify 9, the square root of 9 is 3. And so that's what it's going to be for all of these that you just learned. So, so you may see a big number, like 225. And it's going to say, okay, simplify it. Well, what number times what number equals 225? It's the biggest one you did. It's 15. 15 times 15 is 225. What are the names of the planets? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Let's do it again. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. One more time. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. For timeline this week, we start with Japan's Heian period. So we're going to start by putting our fingers together like this, and they're going to come up in a semicircle like the shape of the Japanese islands. So Japan's Heian period, and then we're also gonna go like this to show levels in the society, kind of like feudalism in Europe, where there were levels to the society. So Japan's Heian period, Charlemagne crowned emperor of Europe. We're gonna make a circle with our hands and put the crown on our head. You guys know all about Charlemagne. You learned about him in week one. So Charlemagne is crowned emperor of Europe, make an E, and we're going to do the royal sash across our body with that E. Then we have Alfred the Great of England, so make an A for Alfred, and then we're going to sign great where our hands just kind of pump out. And then um, for England, we're going to put a flat hand and then have our other hand come over and just gently like fold it and we're going to shake for England. Alfred the Great of England. And next we have Eric the Red and Leif Erikson, Norse explorers. So Eric the Red and then Leif Erikson was Eric the Red's son. So for Eric the Red, we're gonna take two fingers and we're just gonna brush our lips to show red, like the red of your lips. So Eric the Red and Leif Erikson, and then you're just gonna rock a baby because Leif Erikson was Eric the Red's son. And then Norse Explorers, we're gonna explore like the Norse Explorers. Vladimir I of Kiev, which is the same Vladimir of Kiev from our history sentence. Vladimir I of Kiev. Now, when you do the first, you wanna move your hand a little bit like this. That Vladimir I of Kiev, Byzantine Emperor, do the E again in the royal slash, sash, Byzantine Emperor Basil II, and then we have 1000 AD, and remember we do the three fingers down on our palm to show the three zeros in thousand, 1000 AD, and then east-west schism of the church, we're going to do east-west schism of the church. So you're going to put your hands flat and then just pull them apart to show the schism of the church. Great job, let's do it with the music. Japan's he and period. Charlemagne crowned emperor of Europe. Our friend the great of England. Eric the Red and Lee Erickson. Norse explorers. Vladimir the first of Kiev, Byzantine Emperor Basil the second. One thousand AD, one thousand AD, East West schism of the church. Japan's he and Charlemagne crowned Emperor of Europe. Our friend the great of 
England. Eric the Red and Lee Erickson, Norse explorers. Vladimir the First of Kiev, Byzantine Emperor Basil the Second. One thousand A.D. One thousand A.D. East-West schism of the church.